everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. It's Monday and I figured uh, there was all kinds of stuff going on in the racing on the weekend, so we should talk about it. Um, I missed I missed the Spanish Grand Prix. Sorry, uh, I don't know what went on there. And I missed the Xfinity race in Portland. I hear there was some shenanigans going on there, but uh, I didn't see it and I haven't had time to even look at it. So we'll let... Um, um, I, everybody else talk about that. But what I want to talk about first off is um, the, the IndyCar race in Detroit. That was a pretty crazy race, man. That was some kind of full contact IndyCar racing. Lots of uh, going back and forth. It, it was awesome. It was, a, it was a great race. Feel kind of bad for old uh, Ray Hall there. I, <laughs> poor guy crashed his car on, on the caution flag. But anyway... That's a tight, tight, tight racetrack. It's it's a crazy place. Anyway, on to the stock cars. That's what I really want to talk about. Um, there was a couple of controversial things again that happened. Um, after the thing last week with Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin, they, they, they penalized Elliott for hooking Hamlin into the wall. We covered that already. I'm almost at the point now where I wish they had never penalized him because now... Every time two cars touch on the track, every single Tom, Dick, and Harry is on social media screaming because it was their guy that got wiped out. Ah, are they going to suspend him now? Anyway, this we're going to have to deal with this for a while, but we're going to talk about some of the things that, that I saw on the weekend and, and my kind of uh, opinion, which, like my brother says, is, well, I'll, I'll use a different part of anatomy. My brother said opinions are like um, noses. Everybody has one. So you're going to get mine. One thing I want to talk about before we get to the actual controversy is Corey LaJoy. Now, as we know, he filled in for Chase Elliott yesterday because Elliott was serving his suspension. And he was running around at the back all day. He never could get anything going in there. And he wound up. 21st. Now, that's a really difficult situation for a guy like that to get thrown into. Yes, he's in arguably a much better car than he's used to driving, but he's with a different pit crew. He's dealing with a different crew chief. The crew chief, when he says the car's doing this, he's going to throw at it what he probably would throw at the car for Chase Elliott. Whether that'll work for LaJoy or not, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are surrounding guys filling in for other guys, but I, I almost, I'm almost at the, at the point of thinking that LaJoy would have been far better off to just take one of their Spire Motorsports cars that he's familiar with, wrap it like a Chase Elliott number nine car, get a really good bullet for under the hood from Hendrick Motorsports, because that's probably what they're missing most of the time, and let his team call the race for him and make the adjustments that he likes to get throughout the race. And he, he maybe, I can't say for sure, I don't have a, a crystal ball, but he maybe would have had a, a, a better day, or at least have had an easier time getting the car to where he to where he likes it. But anyway, what's what's done is done. Uh, Josefar was, was, doing, was doing better, better than expected in LaJoy's car, but at the end, he was doing better than expected because he was basically kind of pushing his luck with it. He was abusing the brakes and finally the brakes let go and he, and he crashed. Now, I don't think under any circumstances brake rotors should be exploding. That's something else we're going to talk about, but um, um, that it is what it is. So, LaJoy drove Chase Elliott's car. It's over and done with. Everything's back to normal next week. Now, we're going to talk about brake rotors. We had four cars, four cars have wrecks because brake rotors exploded and some of them cars took other cars with them. And the, the scariest one was when Noah Gregson exploded a rotor going down into the corner and the car went down across the grass, spun around backwards and hit the wall real heavy with, uh, with the back and, uh, and the left side. That, that was a nasty wreck and he was obviously shaken up when he got out of it. Now I don't know because these new next gen cars there, there's so much kerfuffle about, about single source parts and this, that, and the other thing. I don't know what the deal is with the brake rotors. If there's, if there's several different ones 
and they can pick a brake package that they want or if NASCAR mandates it or if there's only one rotor that says NASCAR says you shall use this. At any rate, I hope they get this sorted out uh, soon because we can't have that, man. We cannot have brake rotors exploding on race cars. It doesn't happen in any other kind of racing. They're using Formula One and Indy cars and that. They use uh, exotic materials and the, and the stock cars are still using, you know, cast iron as far as I know and it just it's not standing up to it and there's just the four rotors that we saw explode at the racetrack you don't know on Monday morning when those guys take those cars apart how many more than they found that were ready to explode when they start uh, inspecting and magnifluxing stuff uh, who knows hope they get that sorted out anyway on to the on track controversies First controversial wreck we're going to talk about is in the, in the truck race. And um, unfortunately, I, I don't think the trucks have that. What do they call it? The SMT? I call it telemetry, like the cup cars have. So you just kind of kind of look at it and figure it out as, as best as you can. But anyway, what the, the crux of the thing is that um, um, uh, Bill Lawton here today, he's going to be playing the part of Haley Deegan, the number 13 uh, truck. And this is going to be this look at this nice 383 Formula S Barracuda 1969. This is going to be Nick Sanchez in the in the in the number two truck, right? Number two. <laughs> number twos were busy this weekend. Anyway, so basically what happened was um, uh, Deegan found herself on the outside of a three wide and when cars get sideways like this, it, or side by side like this, it slows them up. It's not like running in a single line where you've got the air helping you. So these three cars here are slowed up. Sanchez was coming roaring up behind her like this. And, I mean, yeah, there's no arguing it. He punted her. Boom. He hit her once, which kind of knocked her out clear of these guys. And then the second time, he didn't hit her as hard. But I, I, I kind of imagine that, that this would have upset the truck a little bit and they're going down into the they're going down into the corner and you know that's when the cars are or trucks are at their most vulnerable and the second time he touched her it sent her like that and she went right down to the bottom of the track and then right back up and wall up the wall with the back uh, and the and the whole right side of the car what happened there no one will ever know because everybody's going to automatically assume that the other driver was at fault. The only thing I can, the only thing I can, I can liken this to is a situation that I was in one time, where um, I was this second guy on the outside, and uh, we went down down into the turn, and and this car here, for whatever reason slowed down way before they should have going down into the corner. And I'm telling you, uh, stuff happens fast. You can be back here, and if, if this car slows up early, you don't realize it until after you've already hit them. That's just how it, how it goes at that speed. And what happened was I hit this guy and, and, and punted him, and he got squirreling like that going down into the corner. And, and instead of slowing the car down, and because I got off him, you know, I, I didn't keep rubbing him, he decided to push the gas and try to drive through it. And as the car went around the corner, it bit, and it went down the track, and it hooked a guy like we've seen guys get hooked lately, and that car went straight up in the wall. That car went to the junkyard. It never raced again. And I, I kind of felt bad that it started off my front bumper, but there, there was nothing I could do because for whatever reason... Um, this driver lost his nerve or didn't feel his car would stick up there. I, I, I don't know, but it was a shock to me that he slowed up so early. And maybe that's kind of what happened with Sanchez and Deegan. I, I, I don't know. But it was, it was controversial and a lot of people are talking about it. And you can find all kinds of different opinions about it. Anyway, enough of that. On to the big one. So here's the big one from the cup race. And this involved mostly 
Austin Dillon and Austin Sindrick, although poor uh, Stenhouse ended up bearing the brunt of it. And, and, and that, that was it for his, for his really good day. So, so basically what happened is, um, and this is, I'm going to explain to you how, how I saw it. As someone has driven race cars. That's all I'm going to say. So, they're going along the straightaway, and Dylan is trying to make a move here on Cinder. He's down on the bottom. There's a little hole in front of him. And I think he realized that, man, I'm really, I'm really motoring here. I got to move up. I got to get up to get uh, a good angle down into the corner, or these guys are all going to blow past me. So he, if you look, there's one camera view right straight dead down the straightaway. And you see him start to move up like that into a hole that he thinks is here. But the, the nose of Cindric's car is there. Now, a lot of times, historically, old school racers, they'll cut a guy a break and let him in. But for whatever reason, Cindric decided not to let him in. It could have been because he was mad at him because something happened earlier in the race, or it could have simply been because he's a super competitive guy and it's getting near the end and he says, I'm not giving up the spot. You can stay down there. I'm, I'm going to take the spot. At any rate, what you see is Dylan start to move up the track, you know, and then yes, uh, at, after a little bit of him moving up, you see Cindric's car kind of come down a little bit. They make contact. Dylan goes up and gets Stenhouse and smunches him against the fence just like that. Um, those two cars were done. This guy kept going. Anyway, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Yes, he turned. He turned to the left. There's no doubting that. You can see the car move to the left. But I'm going to tell you something. And I, I, I do this, okay? When you're going down the straightaway and a guy starts drifting up, a guy starts drifting up into you, I, I do it. You turn left, man. Because if, if, if you don't turn left when that guy hits you, it's you that's going into the fence, not him. Or you're going into the fence with him like that. So I've done it before. Guys have started drifting up on me, and I kind of turned to the left a bit to, to protect myself. And, you know, because of that, I'm not sure that they're going to determine that this was a, a right rear hook. You know, a right rear hook, like the Elliott and Hamlin thing. Um, I, I kind of think that, that Sindrick, yes, I mean, he could have cut Dylan a break and let him in, but he decided to play hardball and not let him in. And I, I kind of think he turned a little bit to the left at the last minute to keep his own car going straight and not end up in the fence. That's just my opinion. Um, your mileage may vary. Anyway, it was uh, uh, it, it got a little nutty there at the end of the race. Caution after caution after caution after caution. But at the end, um, old Kyle Busch, he, he kind of hung on. He beat Larson on, I don't know, how many restarts and, and got his, his third win of the season. Um, that was, that was, that was pretty good to see. He's, uh, he's really making a comeback and he's, he's, he's got Richard Childress racing back up in the, in the limelight after, after a long time of, of not being there. Um, and then after the race that the controversy continued when they inter interviewed, uh, Childress and he, he said that was intentional. It was payback, but we don't know payback for what. And I, I, I don't know. Maybe they aren't able to look at it and see it like, like, like I see it. I raced mini stocks. Richard Childress raced, you know, these. So, <laughs> you know, is my word as good as, or is my opinion hold any water against his? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, we'll see what happens next week on Sonoma Road Course. You want something that'll stir up controversy and get a lot of guys mad at each other. So we got... Lots to talk to on Monday. Sonoma will be the place for that. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about racing. And uh, until we meet again, this is Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.